It's World Glaucoma Week. What should we know about this disease? An expert joins us this morning on The Breakfast to tell us just that. Also on The Breakfast, ahead of the all-important World Cup playoff between Ghana and Nigeria, a former Eagle is set to make an unexpected return to the team. We'll discuss his prospects on The Breakfast. And we have incisive analysis of the headlines on today's national dailies. This is The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Very good morning to you. We're glad to be back on your screens right here on what is an interesting edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Mesa Bokos. Beautiful Friday morning. Fantastic. Mercy, it's uh, been an eventful week. We've had uh, very incisive discussions on this program and today we're running it all up uh, with an important look at a disease that uh, affects a lot of people. And from what I, I hear, some people who have glaucoma do not know they have it. We'll be talking to a guest. I can't wait uh, for him to be with us and uh, so we can know some more about this. Not, every, not all the time we talk about politics. Um, these are the important issues that affect the lives of people. But let's start off with a look at um, uh, the stories that have been trending uh, over the past 24 hours. And very interesting one, we'll roll you a, a video, and uh, this is something that uh, you can never write up. Like we normally say, <laughs> you can never write or this script, it just writes itself. Um, one of the trains, a train that was traveling from uh, on the Lagos Ibano uh, Express route, or the train route rather, was, to, was said to have gotten stuck and it ran out of fuel. You know, over the last weekend I had a canceled flight. You know, and um, here we have the video. I had a cancelled flight. What happened? Uh, it, I was told that there were technical issues, but some people suspect that the cancelled flights around the country was due to a scarcity of jet A of A1, jet fuel. Um, now we have a train running out of fuel in the middle of nowhere, and uh, this is user-generated content. You can see the pictures right there, but the video itself says a story. I don't know if we can roll that video, but if you hear what the uh, uh, the the, the passenger said in the video, it's quite funny. Um, they had to bring a, a pickup truck. You can see some expatriates there as well. They had to bring a pickup truck loaded with a, a barrel of diesel. And that was what they were able to now roll on the ground. And then they put a tube into a hose into the barrel. We're able to now, with their hand, you can see him pump the petrol into the train and uh, the, the guy who was with the phone putting up this uh, user generated content online was saying oh in case you're planning to buy a train in the future for yourself this is how you feel it we're stuck in the middle of nowhere the train ran on the field we had to wait for them to bring uh, the petrol or the or diesel whichever it is for us before we can move them um, we thank God for, I think they're safely in Lagos now but this is bizarre um, according to some uh, very unfortunate, uh, very, very sad incident that happened yesterday. But a lot of people would want to say that this is not necessarily, uh, you know, having to blame the government on this one. I mean, it just shows failure of administration. The same thing as having your generator. Yeah, it's bad, but it happens. It happens across, mm -hmm. the, you know, parts of the country. Mm -hmm. But it's not an excuse. I'm just trying to say that let's not blame this on, you know, scarcity of jet A1. That's yeah. not the case. Really? Someone just failed at their job and that's exactly what happened. So this is the because you're supposed scarcity. to understand, you know, it's like you have a generator, you have a car, and you know when you're running down, you know, you're going empty. Mm -hmm. you, you know when the tank yeah. is full, you know what you're supposed to do. Uh, you know that before you turn on the generator, you, you know the, the basic maintenance culture that we carry out. Uh, for those who own the cars, I'm sure this would not be like an excuse. So you understand. So I understand that there's fuel scarcity. Uh, we have aviation scarcity, the fact that it's on the high. But you, you want to agree with me that this is a government corporation. I mean, so it is not acceptable, but it happens. It just shows you that. Let's, let's not begin to say, oh, it's Buhari's fault now. Or, you know, the governor of Lagos State, or you blame the minister. But we blame those who should uh, oh, ensure we, oh, that oh, they oh, know. Oh, we blame Desmond Elliott. 
<laughs> oh, this one. One. <laughs> so it's not part of that. The, yeah. the point is so. So, so what, what you're saying is, even before you embark on a journey, you should do your calculations. Exactly. You should know that's, what feel. That's imagine simple. if this was an aeroplane. <laughs> no, imagine what would have happened. You know, it's it's it's, it's funny now <laughs> that's because a, an excellent point. It, it's funny now because um, we didn't have any casualty. I mean, just just imagine that. It's nowhere. This is Nigeria, and mm -hmm. a lot of you, you hear of a lot of insecurity issues. I mean, bandits could come out. They will probably will be yeah, smiling. Yeah, they would probably be running out of skelter. Yeah. So it, it, it just shows you that we need to do a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, we can't just wake up and act like... Yes, we understand that from time to time we've, we've had in parts of the world where these things happen. But, I mean, it's not an example. Because these things happen. And that's why I would always say that leveraging on other people's experience will be the best. So not necessarily Absolutely. saying you have Absolutely. to. So if this has happened before, how do we prevent it? It's the same thing. It's the same... So we don't learn from our mistakes. Yeah, we don't learn from our mistakes or the mistakes of orders oh, wow. i mean the fact that you have a car you own a generator a generator said i remember back then just being at home you, you dare not even go turn the generator uh, mom would actually ask you have you checked is there oil is there so you need to do all of that and so who, who actually went on send the train it's, it's a very big risk what if something happened you know you know what uh, some people were saying mm -hmm. and, and this is a, a fantastic point you've raised that before you set out on the journey you have to do your preparations you know, and imagine if this was an aeroplane that lost fuel, went out to fuel in the sky. They're, they'd come down. <laughs> you know, the aviation sector has to be, you have to be on the money. You have to plan. You have to be very careful. They do a lot of, um, they're very, very strict in their standards. Um, unfortunately, the, the uh, rail sector is run by government. You know, some, some days ago I was thinking about it. I was looking, running a search through the courier companies in Nigeria um, just to do some back, to know which one can courier something from me from Lagos to Calabar. You know, because we know how the roads are and all that. So I wasn't sure who. And I've had a very, very nasty experience with one transport company that I caught, thought could courier my stuff from Port Harcourt, from Lagos to Port Harcourt. And from December 25th till now, it's not arrived. So what I did was I had to start, you know, going through the um, the Instagram posts of these career companies because they're dealing with Nigerians really to know which one has the fewest complaints so I can use them. You Based know. On the then I, I came up, uh, I chanced upon an article talking about Nipost and how the failure of Nipost had led to, you know, a lot of um, uh, both international and local and even mushroom courier companies coming up. And I'm like, wow. Um, so I started reading about things that caused Nipost to fail. You know, you had uh, even people's items being stolen you know, in Nipost and stuff like that. So I don't know whether this, this, this what we're seeing now is, an, is, the, is one of the evidences we know of um, the ineptitude of government when it comes to running things, you know. We have the aviation sector, Nigerian Airways gone. We have the uh, um, postal sector, Nipost gone. We have the telecommunications sector, NITEL gone. You know, we can go on and on and on. And now we have the rail sector, lots of investment. We've taken loans from the Chinese, and it still is in government, house, uh, government hands, Nigeria Railway Corporation, and this is what we're seeing. But some people online were saying, no, oh, it can happen anywhere in the world. For one, one co person commenting said, yeah, you know, screenshot, gave a screenshot of um, what happened in Los, Los Angeles. When Amtrak train traveling from San Diego ran out of fuel on Sunday night. Um, blah 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 but should we be living by those standards <laughs> I don't know whether we should be living by those standards. it's really unfortunate it's a poor advertisement for an issue I mean we've, we've been seeing other videos apart from this you know I mean last year I'm sure you remember we saw a couple of videos where people got stuck in the middle of nowhere so so, so I think that you know the, train the, broke the, down. this whole um, culture and this ideology of saying yes I understand I, I mean we're taught that in elementary government and economics that um, government is not a good manager of anything yes. and so yes. but let's even look at it in its real sense the people who run the affairs of government are not spirit they're human beings and so whether or not we begin to make the argument it, it's a human issue we need to begin to put structures and have a um, you know, uh, what's it called again? You know, have principles and put out those standards. They are human beings, whether they're in the private sector or, you know, in the government sector. Hmm. And that's what it is. All right. Um, the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers around the country is just a union um, of road transport workers. But in the southwest part of Nigeria, and in Lagos in particular, um, it's, it's a different ballgame. 
you know, I've told you previously <laughs> that uh, I never get at what Lagosians used to call, I never really understood what Lagosians used to call the NERTW officials uh, Agbero. Because where uh, the other parts of the country I've lived in, Agbero, when you hear Agbero, you think of area boy, you know. Um, but I got to understand that Agbero meant those who load passengers into buses or taxis, rather, at the various parks in Lagos. Um, but it's not a, a palatable term to be associated with. Uh, and of course, we've seen the incidents the violence and, and internal fightings leading to you know, gunshots and use of um, dangerous weapons by the National Union of Road Transport Workers in Lagos State, led by uh, the legendary MC Oluomo, <laughs> you know, and uh, this, this guy called MC Oluomo is a sort of an enigma, he's an enigmatic figure. You know, even musicians have sung songs that included his name. The famous, famous song by Tenny um, Makanaki, Makanaki uh, where she said, uh, I go call MC Oluomo, I go report all of them. So he's seen as someone you can report things to. He's also seen as a political stakeholder in Lagos State, where, you know, um, the NERTW is aligned with the All Progressives Congress in Tinubu in Lagos State um, to, uh, to make sure the way elections, let me put it that way, okay? Let me put it that way, for want of a better term. Well, um, the police has, have had to intervene in different skirmishes. Uh, the Lagos State government has had to intervene in different skirmishes in the NERTW and between NERTW and another uh, union. And uh, some persons have been arrested. But the latest one, of course, that got tongues wacky wagging was the fact that uh, the news that the national body of the uh, NERTW had ordered the immediate suspension of MC Olomo. His name is Musiliu Akin Sonia. Um, they suspended this man for what they called misconduct and insubordination to the union management. You remember, he had led a protest in which he, alongside uh, some of his supporters, accused the uh, union at the national level of unnecessarily interfering in the affairs of the union in Lagos State. So what has been MC Olomo's reaction? Um, he called on the Lagos State uh, governor to take over all the motor parks. He called on the Lagos State governor uh, to take over the motor parks. That was his own reaction. Um, he said that Governor Sonola should take over, over the motor parks and run the affairs um, the police in Lagos State, in the meantime, uh, released their men and stationed uh, different, you know, policemen at different motor parks in Lagos in a bid to forestall violence. Because, of course, if Olumos people are not there, some other people will have to take over. And that was a good one, but I saw some police vans moving around Lagos State yesterday. Um, but what we hear also is that um, the NURTW in Lagos State has redrawn from the national body. And they say they're going to be running things on their own. So it's a, it's a dicey situation, and we'll be watching to see what happens in this space. Well, I see how all of that pans out. The, the next one, top trending for us, uh, is the pageant that happened in prison. And of course, you know, uh, some people say she's become a celebrity, uh, talking about Chidima. What was her? Uh, some people say now you don't have to begin to use the word alleged. There's been some, she has confessed uh, to you know, uh, that crime. However, the case is still in court and usually when you have a case in court, I mean, it's out of, you know, a conversation in public space. But looking at the, the, the I think the, what's really causing a lot of Nigerians to talk is the fact that, yes, it looks as if she's in glam. I mean, it looks as if she's living, you know, a very beautiful life. If you look at someone committing a crime, should they have all of those privileges? But if you want to really look at it, you understand that the prison is a rehab you know, it's a rehabilitation center. I understand the concerns of Nigerians as regards how she looks and what's happening. I mean, you're talking about the case of mother here, but well, like we are still saying, the case is still in court. And let's see how that pans out. Also, um, a lot of you football fans uh, expressed sadness over the, um, the news that broke about Roman Abramovich, the owner of Chelsea Football Club. Remember, he's been trying to sell the football club for some time. Um, and that was also a shock, a shocker, having owned the club for so many years. And uh, the Roman Abramovich era, era in Chelsea is the most successful era in the history of that club. And, and they actually uh, are living in their most successful moment. They've won the Champions League, the Champions League last season. Uh, at the beginning of this season, they won the UEFA Super, Super Cup. And then they went on to um, win the World Club uh, Championship, uh, World Club Cup, for the first time in their history. Last time they won the Champions League, 
uh, they didn't win that trophy. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's caused a lot of people to be surprised that the owner of the club wants to sell the club at this time. But of course, this is not unconnected with what's been happening between Ukraine and Russia and the expected sanctions on the Russian oligarchs, uh, most of whom have connections to Vladimir Putin. You know, it's a long story. We might go into that uh, at another part of this uh, program. But um, uh, quite a number of Chelsea fans were not happy with what's going on. So it, yes. it's not going to be, you know, a very easy season for Chelsea uh, right now because we also hear a report saying that they're not expected to sell tickets. It's just going to be quite a difficult time, you know, for them. Uh, but it was really a great move that, you know, Abramovich actually made that move to put up Chelsea for sale. And some people are saying, oh, what does the, uh, you know, the staff, because he it would actually affect those who walk. It would affect a lot of persons. But you see, it just shows you that one man's action can trickle down to every other person. But we'll definitely see how things actually unfold as we proceed in the course of you know the show and moving forward generally. All right, um, that's it on our top trending tro topic, our top trending segment. Um, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a pause now and look at what happened today in history. And when we come back, we dive straight into the headlines of the front pages of the National Daily. Stay with us.